Good morning. Welcome to a Money Mindset Monday on the Daily Huddle. And uh, it's good to see you and it's good to be seen. Good to be here uh, this morning. So we are excited to come to you from Roswell, Georgia today on our, wow. our tour of, uh, of the summer. So um, maybe the Southeast. The Southeast. No, I think we've been out West too. Anyway, summer tour. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> um, today, we're going to talk to you guys about why are we so emotional about money? But before we do, um, we are going to have a few questions for you. Zach O, you want to ask him? Well, in a minute. Oh, in a minute. I forgot you had cheese. So, in <laughs> yeah. Prepare for the cheese. It's so, coming. <laughs> so I walked past the homeless cheese. man yesterday with a sign that said, one day this could be you. So I quickly put my money back in my pocket just in case. <laughs> 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 I mean, plan for your future, right? Money, but not money, right? <laughs> Makes me tear up a little. Well, good morning, everybody. I hope you didn't miss Zach's cheesy joke, but if you did, you can rewind it and watch it again later on Facebook. It's it's one for all of us. I don't know if it's worth hearing twice. Uh. <laughs> um, I'm Kimberly. This is Zach, and we are your hosts for today on Money Mondays, um, and we're going to talk today about why we're so emotional about money. But before we start that, we do have a couple of questions to ask you, um, but before we ask those questions, I want to remind you guys that we have a live event in Alpharetta with all of our hosts for the Daily Huddle for the week um, on August 12th. And we want you to go and register and come see us in person and, and let us say hello to you. We see you virtually once a week. We want to see you in person and, and give you a big hug and say hello. Um, the event is hosted at thedailyhuddleevent.com. So go there, check it out, register to see us, and, and we'll see you that Saturday. We're super excited about it. Okay, now you can ask your questions. All right. Uh, hmm. I know there are people on here that I can't see because we don't have. Uh, here, I'll pull. There up. we go. Um, so let's see. Um, Chase, I like hearing your voice on Monday morning first thing. What time is it and what are you grateful for today? Grand day, Sir Zacco. <laughs> Zacco. Mm -hmm. You said that I, I had to say it. Yeah. I, I like the way you will happened. forever be Zach O. Yeah. <laughs> and it's Zach Odie, so he is Zach O, right. right? Ah, you got a good one, Zach. You got a good one. I like her. Yeah. Um, Sharp. <laughs> now, I, I've forgotten the question. Did you say, Where am I? Oh. <laughs> How, what time is it? And what are you grateful See? for? You guys make me so happy. Uh, the time is now, uh, absolutely now, uh, cannot be changed. Oh, it's now again. Oh, it's now again. Um, I am grateful for, you know, I'm grateful for my my voice that I was able to use this weekend and make a lot of people happy. So that's what I'm grateful for. Awesome. I look forward to hearing you sing at some All point. All right. There we never know. Maybe we'll never just know. have a, a daily huddle live um, singing event. Ah, I like that. Yeah. All right. We'll talk about it. Come see the talents. There you go. There you Who's go. It concert. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> All right. Well, Andrea, where are you and who will you hug today? I am right where I need to be, which is right here. And I'm going to hug... Um, after myself, <laughs> I'm going to have my boyfriend. I'm going to meet him at his co-working space later today. So. Awesome. awesome. All right. And all right, Sorrel, how are you? Ah, I am energized. I had a nice walk this morning. I managed to get three miles in and it's like oh my god i miss walking but i caught a cool morning and went for it i am energized love it love it that's the word of the day energized right let's 
let's get energized. So we're going to talk about um, money again. Imagine that on a Monday morning. Uh, but we've talked about this and kind of danced around it. So Kimberly and I have talked between ourselves and looked and read and, and we've been digging about why are we so emotional about money? Uh, we've, we've referenced back to this in multiple uh, episodes prior to that um, it comes from a lot of different things. But in order for us to change our money mindset, we have to first identify why we have the one we've got. Um, and maybe it doesn't need to be changed, right? Maybe we, were, we, we had things in our background that we'll talk about here in just a few minutes that were uh, a positive money mindset. Uh, so knowing your mindset about money, knowing where your emotions about money come from will help you to identify those things. So, and I think before we get started in the content of this, um, I would ask all of you, you don't have to share it with us right here, but, but take a minute and really think to yourself, how do you feel about money? How do you feel about money? Really take that. And if you don't have time to do it right now, and then kind of work through that, then write that down as, as something to do over the next day or, or week and, and really dive deeply into how do you feel about money? Because all of our feelings are going to be different. All of our feelings come from different places. Some have, have real reasons to feel that way. And some of them are just, you know, it's because that's just how we feel. It's an emotion, right? And, and whether it's rational or not, that's how we feel about money. So take that minute um, as we're going through this conversation today and think about how you feel about money. Yeah, and, and I think that um, when you do that, and you dig in a little bit, you'll realize that most of our feelings, yours, mine, everyone's about money are unrelated to financial decisions we make. And they're more indicative of something deeper than that. Something that is attached to uh, either an abundance or a lack of money in our past in, in some way, shape or form. So um, I know I think about the way I am about, let's just say credit cards um, and and carrying balances on credit cards or, or getting out as, and there's a story Kimberly would laugh out loud if, when she hears me say this about living beyond your means. Right. Um, but I, I think that, are you going to tell it? No. Well, uh -oh. no. <laughs> I was like, I don't know the story. Are you going to tell me? We're, we're in a, um, you know, we're in a world of immediate gratification. We want the information right now. We, if we, we used to have to look something up when I was a school teacher, we had, we talked about research-based questions. So if I had a student that asked me a question in science class um, or in history, where they said, you know, Mr. Odie, what about this? And they asked me a question and it was something they could find with research. I would say that's a research-based question. So why don't you write that down, go research it and come back and tell all of us the answer. It's a good question. Um, it, so the, a research-based question is one that you can go and find the answer to. So I want to dive in, research a little bit, uh, and I want you guys to do that too, about what it is that makes you feel the way you do. Well, so for me, I know that um, in this world of immediate gratification, we don't have to research much anymore. We can get the answer to our question right there on our phone, whether it's a, a Google, which is the most common search engine or whatever else, you can do whatever you wanna do, uh, or you can find whatever you want to find without uh, an encyclopedia. Uh, it's funny from a research perspective, I, I, one of my favorite quotes was um, Albert Einstein. He said that, uh, he said, a man who has an entire set of encyclopedias memorized is a worth about what a set of encyclopedias cost. A man who knows how to use those encyclopedias has made himself invaluable. So it's one of those things, it's not about what you know, it's about what you can do. But nobody even knows what an encyclopedia is anymore, right? So I'll, I'll, get, <laughs> off, <is> Google. <laughs> I'll get off of my tangent on that and realize that in order to understand anything, I think research is important. And it's also important not to just find the first article, stop there, read it. It's important to read it and then read other perspectives or read more, uh, more directions about that. So money's a big thing. Um, and we all have preconceived notions about it and whether it's good whether it's bad whatever it is so why is it so emotional why is money an, an inanimate object emotional almost like a, a family member sometimes uh, or 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 things like that so anything important is emotion right yeah 
Thank so. you. I, I didn't know when you were going to stop and I was going to start. Um, but yes, anything important is emotional, right? Your family is important. Your job is important. Your money is important. Anything in your life that is important is emotional. And those emotional decisions, whether they're rational or not, are going to factor in how you look at things, how you move forward. So whether it's the thought of, of being without, right? Or, you know, I think we can, we can, um, make it really simple. I think debt has really negative emotions and I think savings has really positive emotions, right? And wherever we fall in the balance of, of debt and savings is how we feel about money. Um, <clears throat> but the root of that, going back into like money psychology, where does this come from? What does this look like? Goes all the way back to all of our experiences in our lives. Those experiences made us who we are today, right? They, they make us um, who we are as a person, but they also formulate our money mindset. So um, what did your family think about money? What were the conversations that you heard when you were little? Did you guys have plenty or did, were, was it kind of tough sometimes? Um, that probably plays a lot into how you talk about, how you feel about, how you think about your money today. Um, what, what is the media messages, right? What do we put into our brain? What do we hear every single day? And what have we heard all of our life is there not enough or is there too much are you greedy right is, is money bad or is money good can you do good things with money or is too much money just always make you bad we've heard all of this stuff in our lives but the culture you guys no, it, me? Not, 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 <laughs> not intentionally but when you talk about you know our, our emotions about money I want you to think about if you're driving down the road um, with a family member uh, it comes to my mind uh, it, driving through or by nice neighborhoods uh, as a kid, what's the comment that comes out of somebody's mouth or that tells you the direction? It's like, it, 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 are they feeling like people that, that might have made more money than they did have done it at the expense of others? Is it a negative comment or a negative conversation? It's, oh, look at all those people in there. Or is it something that like they're thinking more about, I wonder how, or I wonder what, or, you know, one day I'm going to do this. Um, what is that mindset? How did, so uh, again, I remember as a child, my credit card story, I remember my mother paying off credit cards, cutting them into pieces and making refrigerator magnets out of them because she wanted to see them in front of her every single time because running up credit card debt as a teacher, it happens. You have two months off in the summer and, and the money doesn't change. The income cut, you got kids that want to travel, you got all these things in it. So it's very, very tough to manage that. But um, I remember that vividly. So I think that goes to my, my awareness of credit cards, ironically, is what she did for herself sticks out in my mind. So, <laughs> sorry, uh, this topic is one that we spend so much time with people and, and trying to draw their emotions about money out in our conversations with their plans, with their planning. Why do you, why do the people that save from an early, early age do that? Why do they start? And, and focus on that. And why do the people that won't talk about it or don't talk about it, what got them to that point? So we do spend a lot of time in that, in that psychology of why. And, and I think that's what this, why this means so much. Well, and I, I think if you, if you go back to that money psychology conversation, which we've been talking about all morning, um, it, it goes to obviously all of your personal experiences, the culture that, that you're surrounded with your friends, how do they spend money? You know, because you are who you hang around, right? That, that's just the way it works. Um, the churches that you grew up in, I, I, I was raised Southern Baptist. And I, I don't know that money was a positive thing. It was positive, but not too much of it, right? So it was, uh, I don't know, it made, made you feel kind of dirty to have too much money or to want too much money, right? Because most people, I guess, didn't do good things with it. I don't know. Did you, was your church that way? At, no, I, I mean, it was, <laughs> I, I think it's all about how you receive the message, right? I think that's one of the things that, that, church is I think when you go into there and I don't go on that down that rabbit hole but I, I don't think that I think it's about what people do with that money and uh the presumption of people that that do bad things or and get away with them really is are people that are wealthy um and or that you know there are needy people in need and my joke at the beginning is certainly not the way I feel about about things um it, it was meant it totally tongue-in-cheek and humor but um there are people in need and then there are people with excess why don't they you know, why is it fair, right? What, there's a fairness conversation there. Not, and, and all of that goes back to 
where we are. I believe that that money is is abundant, uh, and we should focus on a life of abundance, whether it be love, giving, um, earning, making ourselves able to do more. Um, I don't. I do not believe that because someone else has had success, it makes me less likely to have success financially. And I think that's where some of the resentment comes in. If we're not where we want to be, and we see others that are where we think we might want to be, uh, we also probably should spend a little bit of time being thankful and grateful. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Don't don't be complacent and settle, but also understand the things. Like we asked in the beginning, where are you and you know, how are you and what are you grateful for today? Those are the mindset questions that you should start every day with. And I would imagine that your money mindset would change and you might have some positive things going on. But if you're here, guess what? You probably start your days with those questions. So, um, so I want you guys to, to think about, like as we're talking about money mindset, and, and this is something I'll, I'll say really quickly before I, I switch topics, but um, Monica was on our show um, I guess a couple of months ago. And that's one of the things that she said. Did she say before you're seven? <laughs> think, like about, so. think about, think um, about, you know, what you remember about money before age seven. And that's likely how you respond to money now today. So if you think about your childhood up to that, that really early education time in your life, what did it feel like? You know, um, I thought that was very, very fascinating and, and would love to kind of go down that path with her again. But going forward, like Zach said, and like we've talked about before in the past, we have to change our mindset. It has to go from a scarcity mentality to an abundance mentality. And that's not going to be overnight. It is something that we have to work on. It's something we have to work towards. It's something we have to do every single day, probably multiple times a day when we start, you know, hearing that the little bird on our shoulder telling us something that, that we should push away. We need to push it away and refocus our mind on that positive energy. And again, it's, it's not an overnight conversation, but it's definitely something that we need to work towards. So in that, in that vein, I'll tell you, take a minute right now and think about your rich life. We all have a rich life, right? We all have our dreams. We all have these places that we want to go and these things that we wanted to do. A lot of times, most of the time, every time um, I start every single financial conversation, whether it's somebody that I know has probably nothing or gazillionaires with the same question. If I could wave a magic wand and Tamara looks exactly like you want it to look like, what is that? Because I want to know if they can dream. I want to know how excited they are about their future and about their possibilities. And I, I want to know what the rich life looks like. So take that as a task, right? The, the first thing we said earlier was, how do you feel about money? Think through that. And then go think about what does your rich life look like? And then ask yourself why you want to be rich. Why does that matter to you? What does that look like to you? All of our stories are going to be different right? Some of us are going to want to sit on our front porch and, and rock in our rocking chair and drink sweet tea and listen to the birds for the rest of our lives. And some of us want to be on a yacht, right? In the middle of the ocean and, and have everything brought to us. And it's okay. It's your story. It's your rich life. Whatever that is, think about what that is so you can start working towards it and you can start manifesting it. I'm going to give you guys an activity that I'd like for you to do. Um, and then we'll, uh, I'll let you talk again in just a second and okay. then we'll open it up. But um, I heard this on a podcast the other day and she said, pull out five sticky notes. So if you don't have five sticky notes with you right <laughs> now, then make yourself a note of what you're going to do for at the end of the day today. Um, but take five sticky notes and write down why. What does your rich life look like? And then write down why. Why are you doing this on five different pieces of paper and stick them all around your house? Because everywhere you look and everywhere you see, it reminds you of why you're moving forward every day. We're doing this for our children. 1,000% zero question for our children, right? That would be our biggest sticky note. But it reminds you every time you walk by it. And today, I think with our phones, you know, we've got goals and we've got dreams. and We've got all this stuff written down, but it's written down in a digital format. And unless I open my computer, or open my phone and touch on that document and pull it up and look at it, it's not in my face. I want this to be in your face every single day, every time you turn around, when you go to the bathroom, when you look in the mirror, it doesn't matter to me. I want it on your, on your steering wheel in your car, right? Put it as, as the, the backdrop on your home screen. I've got a lot of notifications, but you can see my, my backdrop is the law of attraction. I want this to brainwash you 
every single second that you look at it all day, every day. Um, and then I think when you start focusing on those pieces, your mindset will shift and, and your thoughts will shift and you will be grateful and you will have, it'll, it'll just be magic, right? It'll just start happening to you. And you're like, what happened? Why is this different? Yeah. And, and I feel personally that if we focus on the, not focus on what we want, but on giving to others, whether it be, uh, you know, and, and Chris Stapleton has a song, it's called Millionaire. Some of you might not be uh, uh, fans of, of country music or, or whatnot, but he says, uh, people say love is more precious than gold. It can't be bought. It can't be sold. Well, I've got love enough to spare. So that makes me a millionaire. And so I thought about that, but also about the joke at the beginning. I, I, I literally am the one that regardless of what the circumstances are for whoever that we're, we're driving by, if I have money in my pocket and there's somebody that obviously needs some, I'm going to give it away. Uh, I, I remember there was a guy playing an accordion of all things in a, in a parking lot outside of, outside of a grocery store in Atlanta. And he was playing, playing this accordion. He had a sign there talked about, you know, needed help, family, kids, but he didn't have them out there beside him. It wasn't a big show. He was just playing his music. And I just rolled up to him and gave him a hundred dollar bill. And you thought you would have thought that I had changed his world. And maybe I did. Maybe I just gave him faith in humanity just a little bit that, that, that people want to give. So I think if we give away, it multiplies. Uh, when it comes to business, when it comes to life, Zig Ziglar said it best. He said, if I help enough people get what they want, I'll never have to worry about having what I want. So I think that's what I want to close with on this abundance, money, mindset, all those kind of things is um, don't be selfish. Uh, and, and you'll be amazed at how much everything grows in your life. So um, let's open it up for some questions, comments, um, and, uh, and go from there. And Zach has his, um, what do you have? Your, your, <laughs> we can right. see y'all if you have questions or comments or raise your hand for some reason. Oh, so just right. unmute yourself and, and have, uh, start talking to us. <laughs> it's all right, we'll fix it later. You good? <laughs> all right. And Kimberly, thank you, thank you. Uh, I, I wanna share what came up for me when, uh, you said, go back to the age of seven and take a look and see where you got your money mindset. And mine sounds like this. Uh, there isn't enough of it for sure. Because if there was enough of it, the people around me would have some. <laughs> yeah. Right. And uh, the second thing that came up was uh, it's not for everyone. It's mostly for the mean people. Mean people. Mean people. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's mostly for the mean people. And then, and then so uh, I, I saw this construct for myself. It's like, okay, this is how I'm going to live. I'm going to make just enough money not to be mean. Not to be mean. Not to be mean. <laughs> <laughs> and just enough money not to be suffering like the, like the others around me. <laughs> right there in the middle, right? Right, right there, there in the middle. And it's like, you know, and, and, and I'm more concerned about the ceiling than the floor. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Cause no, nah, I ain't going to be me, <laughs> but I could stand making just a little bit less so I can identify with the ones that are being used. Quote unquote. That that's, that's what I saw for myself. So how has that changed through the years? Uh, it's changed this way. It's like the, the ceiling went up mm -hmm. along with the floor. But there's still a ceiling. But I can still see for myself. That's the way my brain's wired when it comes to money. Yeah. So uh, no longer... Naturally, you know what? I'll just chance and say, I'm still shackled by that. Yeah. It's just in a different range. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that um, that's an interesting analogy because I think we all are, right? I, I think that's what we work towards when we're, when we're changing our mindset and everything is to how do we take off that ceiling, mm -hmm. right? How, how can we push back past that? And I don't know if that is, I don't know, you know, have to, I, I don't know. I don't know if it just 
continues to increase, but you still always have a seat. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know either. And, uh, and, and one thing I do say I know is that the exercise of looking, like you're having us look this morning, makes a big difference. And uh, so for me, it leaves me at a place where, well, you know, uh, it's gone up, it's gone up. I, I can choose as opposed to just being entrapped by it. So uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity and the possibility of choosing my relationship with money. All these and, things we wish we'd known, right? As kids, shoulda, yeah. woulda, coulda. Like, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> it is funny though, because I think about, um, I think about our daughters um, and we have four and our oldest just turned 23 yesterday. And so um, she was at, at that very formidable age in that in in that uh, 2008 uh, time frame, she was born in 2000. Born so in 2000. 2008, she was eight. She was eight. So we're talking <laughs> at that, and she is our our most money conscious. Um, she saves everything she makes. She's she, so I think she was cognitively aware when the financial world and the mortgage world changed for us overnight. It was those conversations that we had about oh that maybe there's not enough money, right? So we did really well going into that. Uh, and, and then things changed, like light switch went off. And so our kids were, our, our oldest two especially, were in that, now my my one that will be 21 this year, those formidable years might not have kicked in quite as much for her because <laughs> she likes to buy her things. She likes to spend her money when she makes and it. She's got a good savings she too. Does. She talked about she investing does. this year and she's studying abroad. And I was like, I want you to spend it. <laughs> Yeah, you, I, I that I will not usually say that, but I want you to spend it. Yeah. Go have that experience. Yeah. So I think that that's that to me. I'm looking at that, and and our our younger two. There's five years between our middle two children, so our younger two are um they're yet to be seen, right? They, they're to see where they where their money mindset is right now. They don't think about money because mom and dad think about money, so they, they think <laughs> it grows on trees as that as the old adage goes. But um, but yeah, guys, this is uh. It's so great uh, to think and to talk about growth, um, and I think that's what the Daily Huddle brings is um, your positive thoughts and growth in all aspects of life. And so, um, you know, I, I'm a, I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you guys, and, and I look forward to everything coming forward. Uh, certainly looking forward to this live event. Um, it, we've been doing this for a little while with everyone and have yet to meet uh, pretty much any of you in person. We feel like we see you and we know you well, but uh, I'm excited about that event, and I'm also excited about what each and every person brings to that with their expertise and with what that, that live event is going to be like. So uh, if you're watching this now and you haven't registered, go to thedailyhuddleevent.com, uh, take a look at it and register for that. It will be worth it. So, Yeah, so today, um, if, if we don't have any more questions or comments, um, we're, we're right at the end, so we are going to wrap it up with our, our eight tenets. So um, as you move through your day and as you move through your life, um, love, right? Laugh out loud, stress less, eat mostly plant-based, give, we talk about that quite a bit, sleep, sleep is super important. <laughs> um, move, move your body and then check yourself before you wreck yourself. Um, and with that, guys, we'll see you tomorrow morning, same time, same place on the Daily Huddle. Talk to you soon. Can't wait.